I do a lot of writing, and over the last four or five months or so, I've been searching for the perfect Markdown editor, and I've not found it, because nothing is ever perfect, and I'm kind of picky, but during that time, I've tried quite a few different Markdown editors, and what I thought I'd do today is talk about the five favorites that I've found over the last few months. Now, just because an application did not make this list doesn't mean that it's not good. There are a few that I've tried that are also really good Markdown editors, but I wanted to kind of narrow it down to five, so that's what I've done. Let's go ahead and talk about the five best Markdown editors for Linux. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first one I'm putting on the list is Vim. Now, Vim is my favorite text editor overall, but when it comes to Markdown, it's probably towards the bottom of the list, and that's the reason why I'm putting it number five. It does a pretty good job of doing the regular Markdown stuff, but because you can only use one font size, it doesn't do a very good job of showing you where like the headers are and stuff like that, so it doesn't really perform well in that aspect. What I like about it the most is that it's Vim. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but if you're used to using Vim, if you're used to writing in Vim, Doing Markdown in Vim makes a ton of sense because you are already familiar with all the wonderful key bindings, being able to move around using the Vim movements and things like that, and it just works really, really well. Now, obviously, not everyone likes Vim because of the Vim key bindings and stuff like that that people just don't really care for, but if you are already a Vim user and you are interested in starting writing or if you're a writer or whatever, Vim is a good option. Or if you're already a writer, Vim is actually a really good option for Markdown, specifically because it has a ton of the stuff that makes Vim great itself. The next one on the list is called Apostrophe. Now, Apostrophe is the simplest application on this list. It does Markdown, and that's basically it. Now, obviously, it does have a few other features, but at the end of the day, what it does is Markdown, and it does it fairly well. It allows you to do headings, links, all that stuff that you'd expect in a Markdown application, and it does have live preview if you want it. So if, if you want to preview your Markdown alongside your editing screen, you can do that, or you can have a full screen preview window, however you want to do it. It works fairly well. It doesn't do the best auto-transitioning your text from Markdown into the final form right inside of the editor, whereas some of the other editors do a good job of when you write a heading, it transforms into a heading almost immediately. Apostrophe does not do that, but that's not a big deal for a lot of people. People, for the most part, really don't care what the Markdown looks like until the end. That's one of the things about writing about Markdown. Now, for me personally, this one was a little bit too simple, but if what you're looking for is a pure Markdown app that doesn't have a lot of frills, no synchronization between different applications or anything like that, Apostrophe is a good option for you. The third application on the list is an application called Ghostwriter, and Ghostwriter is a fantastic app. In any other situation, this may be the best application on the list. It comes with a ton of different features, and one of the neatest things is if you're writing like a novel or something long form in Markdown, Ghostwriter actually does a really good job of counting your words and counting your productivity while you're using Ghostwriter. So for example, once you open up Ghostwriter and start working, it's going to actually time your session and it can tell you how many words you've written since you sat down and started writing. It will also tell you what level your writing is, whether it's very easy to read or very hard to read. It will tell you how many characters you've written, all this stuff. And the sidebar in Ghostwriter is one of the most useful things of all the applications that I'm going to cover today. It gives you all this extra information, plus there's a cheat sheet. So if you're not as into Markdown as a lot of people are, and you don't know it as well, the little cheat sheet that comes with Ghostwriter can really help you kind of realize what the power of Markdown actually is. It gives you all of the stuff that you need to know in order to do the basics when it comes to Markdown, which is really nice. Ghostwriter does have a lot of options, but the best one, in my opinion, is that it lets you create your own themes. So if you are into kind of creating your own writing space, Ghostwriter is probably the best one because it allows you to tweak what everything in the application looks like. So while it may not have the most settings out of everything on this list, so that is Ghostwriter. It's one of my favorites. And honestly, like I said, on any other day, this would probably be the application that I consider the best because it really does a fantastic job of being a Markdown editor without getting a ton of stuff in the way. 
The next app on the list is called MarkText, and MarkText is the application that I've been using for the last few months when it comes to actually doing my writing. And the things that I like about MarkText is that it really does a good job of handling very large documents. It obviously does all the markdown stuff really well. It has customizable key bindings, so if you are into, into customizing your key bindings, you can do that. It also, one of my favorite things about it is that if you have a specific folder or directory where all of your writing stuff happens, you can open that file in MarkText and then it will remember that file always, or at least until you change files. And that's really nice if you do all of your writing in one specific directory. So when you next time you open up MarkText, the file that all of your stuff is in is right there ready for you to go inside of the tree and you can just navigate to the document that you want to start editing or you can create a new one if you want, whatever you need to do. And that kind of saves you a little bit of time. You don't have to go open up a directory to find where your stuff is as long as all of your stuff is in that one directory that you, know, you always work with. MarkText does have a few themes. It doesn't have the customizability of Ghostwriter when it comes to themes. It just has like four or five just regular themes that you can choose from. They're all very pretty, but they're, beyond those themes, there's not much customization when it comes to look and feel. Obviously, you can do the font and stuff like you can in all these applications, but the theme is kind of set between those three. Not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. It does have a ton of settings. So if you are a tweaker when it comes to trying to make your application your own. MarkText is full of settings that you can tweak to your heart's content to determine how markdown functions, how spelling functions, how the editor looks and feels, the key bindings, as I mentioned before, things like that. And it's really nice, especially, like I said, if you are into customizing how your editor looks and feels. The last thing that I will mention is that it also has tabs. Now, if you've followed the channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm a sucker for tabs. And MarkText has tabs. It means that you can have multiple documents open up at the same time, and you can just flick between them in tabs, and it just works really, really well. I can't even... There was a point there where I had like 12 or 14 documents open at the same time, and I could just, you know, flip between them, and it was simple as that. Now, tabs really aren't all that special because a lot of... Markdown editors have tabs, but MarkText was the first app that I used that has had tabs, and it's really nice. The, one of the coolest things is that you can have a whole bunch of documents open at the same time, and then there's a little button when you hover over the open files that lets you save all of them all at once. That's really, really nice, especially, like I said, if you use a whole bunch of tabs and you want to save them, you can do so, all with that just one button. It's perfecto. Now, the last application on the list is an application that I haven't actually used all that much and I didn't really care for when I first used it and that is Obsidian. Now a lot of people swear by Obsidian and at one point I would have told you those people were kind of crazy because it really is just kind of, it felt bloated to me like there's so much stuff going on here and for the most part if you're just looking for a markdown editor that's not really I mean, it does mark down really well, don't get me wrong. I'm putting it number one on the list for a reason. It does mark down fantastically well. But when I first opened it up many, many months ago, I did not care for it because it is a knowledge-based editor, meaning that it's more of a OneNote replacement, something like that, maybe Evernote, something like that. And it's, you know, it does really well for that, but... When you're searching for a markdown editor, you don't really need all of that note-taking stuff. I mean, maybe you are looking for a note-taking application, in which case maybe you also want a markdown editor and you're kind of putting those things together. But for Obsidian, it always just felt more like a note-taking application than a markdown editor. But over the last couple of weeks, I've been trying it. And Obsidian is actually, I mean, it is fantastic. Uh, it gives me a lot of the things that Mark Text and Ghost Writer do and then kind of combines them. My favorite one is that not only does it have tabs, but it allows you to do split screen. So a lot of Markdown editors will allow you to have one side be your editor, one side be your live preview. Most of them actually do that. And I think every single one on this list does that. But with Obsidian, you can actually have two editors side by side, so you can work on two different documents. So kind of like splits in Vim or Emacs or something, you can do that instead of, of Obsidian, and it is really, really good. So when it comes to actually using Markdown in Obsidian, 
it does just as good a job as Mark Text. You can do links, lists, all that stuff. It works really w well. It has support for every part of Markdown that you could possibly want, inc including math, tables, forms, things like that. It works just fine with all that stuff. You can also use the HTML block, the code block, all that stuff will work here, just like it does in the others. And on top of that, you get all of the stuff that works really well when it comes to note-taking. So you could use this for both your Markdown editor and your note-taking stuff. Now, I'm never going to use the note-taking stuff because I don't need it. I use something else for notes. But if that's something that appeals to you, having both of those things in the same place, that's really nice. Now, the one thing about Obsidian, as I said, is that it's a bigger thing than just a Markdown editor. So when you go into the settings you might be overwhelmed a little bit because there's a ton of stuff there that not only has to do with Markdown, but all of the other things that Obsidian can do. And it can do a ton of stuff. It stores all of your stuff in a vault. And that's probably my least favorite part of this is that, yes, you can open up documents you know, that you have stored elsewhere. You can easily do that. It's really meant to be used with your vault and you, you can think of your vault as kind of a, a notebook in like one note or something like that it's kind of like that thing it's a it's a collection of all your documents in one place but if you don't use that and you don't want to use it, it obsidian is really n not the greatest when it comes to doing documents outside of that vault so uh, it does allow you to do it so th that's the reason why i didn't really not, you know take points away for that but it's one of the things that I noticed. It's really meant to be, work with that vault. Now, in terms of themes and customization, uh, it's, it has a light and a dark theme, so it's not. In ter it doesn't have the most themes, but you can choose whatever accent color you want, which does add to some of the customization. It also has a very large selection of plugins. So if you want to do things other than just Markdown, you can scroll through the plugins, and it will do a fantastic job of you know giving you extra options. And those can all be downloaded and installed right inside the app. So you don't have to go to a GitHub page or something and then transfer an XML or whatever file somewhere on your system. It just downloads it right inside the application, installs it. It works really well if that's something that you need. So those are the top five Markdown editors that I've tried over the last few months. And every single one of them does something really, really well. If you're looking for utter simplicity, Apostrophe is probably the one that you want to go with. If you're looking for something that is much more complex, Obsidian is the one that you want to go with. If you're already entrenched in the Vim ecosystem, use Vim. If you are less interested in the note-taking aspects of Obsidian, MarkText is probably the best. So when it comes to declaring the best of the best, my selection is still going to be MarkText, simply because I don't need all of the extra features of Obsidian and... MarkText does a better job of handling documents outside of the vault. Now, I put Obsidian number one on this list simply because, A, it's, it is really, really good. If you need a note-taking application or a knowledge-based application, and you also want a Markdown application, it does all three of those things really, really well, and it has a ton of features, and just the idea of being able to have two editors side-by-side -side in a split mode, it just tickles the nerd in me, I guess. I really like that feature, and I like their management of tabs the best out of any of the applications here. It just does a really good job of tab management, and that's just kind of my thing. It really just made me happy to see all that stuff, and that's the reason why I got the number one spot, despite the fact that I really do like MarkText better in many different ways. So that's it for this video. If you have comments on these applications or if you have other applications that you'd like to suggest when it comes to Markdown, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description along with all my other social media stuff, the link to the website, the link to the store, all that stuff in the video description below. Check it out. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. I mean, seriously. Thank you so very, very much. We just went over 22,000 subscribers, and that's just, again, mind-blowing. Every single time I increase a little bit, it just blows my mind. My mind has been blown. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.